You're sitting for the California bar exam. You are doing the one hour essays. You open the booklet. You are not sure about the issue, about the rule, and about the elements. What do you do? Don't panic. Now, many of you know that the California bar exam is changing. It is now testing more obscure issues and rules, more nuances. And I'm gonna show you how to get a passing score even if you are not certain about the issue, the rule, or the elements. And we are gonna do so with the help of our friends over at BarEssays.com. Stay tuned. A lot of times after an exam is administered, many of the people who took the exam, they will go to forums and then they will focus a lot on whether they discuss an issue. And some of these people, they get like very upset, like when they discuss an issue and maybe others didn't, they'll, they'll be like, hey, yeah, you should discuss this issue. If you didn't, you're gonna fail. But that is not true because see, a lot of people are focused on issues. But if, again, if you look at the instructions for the California bar exam, they also want you to discuss material facts. So what happens is that a lot of people become obsessed with issue spotting and they tend to, I would use even the word neglect, a lot of the incorporation of the facts. They overlook uh, the use of many other facts and that's why it, even if they they uh, identified and used the issues that does not necessarily mean that they're gonna pass the exam and today we're gonna focus on answers that receive a 65 a 70 and even an 80 and you're gonna get a chance to compare and see how these examinees are structuring their essays and they are writing passing answers. Now, I do want to say that this video is not intended to be like a shortcut to properly studying. I am assuming that if you're watching this, you are doing your best to prepare. So you are watching this video in good faith in accordance to your rigorous studying. I just want to get that out of the way. And today we're going to look at, again, at the material facts. I want to focus on that because even if you have, again, the proper issues, but you do not identify the material facts and, you, and and if you do not distinguish the material facts from the immaterial facts, again, you are not going to get a passing score. So I want to say that as well. And of course, this is part of a larger course, the 1440 Advanced IREC series. So if you haven't gotten that, there's going to be a link here at the bottom. Now, we're also going to talk about uh, nomenclature, the different parts of the major issue analysis. Let's start off by discussing the material facts. Now again, whatever issue you discuss has to have its origin reasonably derived from the facts. So today we're going to focus on the confrontation clause. Now this is a very difficult issue to understand. So what happened here for this particular bar exam, there was, I would say, based on the responses here and, and on the grades they received, that it is fair to say that there was extra credit given to people that properly identified the confrontation clause and they used it properly. And let's look at the statistics here. So again, this is just a sample taken from BarAces.com and I just went to the people that had responses that were typed. And let's see now. So I, I even looked at the model answers from the State Bar of California and there both model answers, they touched on the confrontation clause and there was a response found in BarAces.com with an 80. They discussed it, 75 answers. There was no data for that. And answers that received a 70, 
there were four type responses and two of them did discuss two of them did not and so that's 50 percent of the responses and for the 65 answers there was five type responses and 20 percent of that only one discussed the confrontation clause so i don't mean to say that that you have to particularly like follow one format like there's not just one correct answer and you have to have that but again the instructions do say that you have to discuss the material facts and that is what they did but the reason why i'm discussing the confrontation clause is because it's an example of what happens when maybe uh, everything is coming at you and you're not sure about which issue is being focused on so what do you do is you say hey look i know how to analyze okay i know how to look at the facts here and i'm gonna do my best i'm gonna write a standard a very structured response i'm gonna be organized so that's what we are going to focus on here today and another thing is that of course this video here is going to be focused on establishing that minimum competence response and i'm not saying that you should aim for a 65 i mean you should aim but you should also look to improve to a 70 and that's why we're going to look at at a 70 response and even an 80 but it's very important to say this that before you start writing answers that go towards a 70 you should know what a 65 looks like i would even say you should even master the response at the 65 level you got to start somewhere so you do have to be patient and of course the instructions say that you must write in a lawyer like manner so what does that even mean and when you talk about a response that fits that style that lawyer like style you have to talk about organization and that's why we're going to focus on the nomenclature of a major issue analysis so let's talk about the nomenclature for that major issue analysis. So of course you have IRAC, you see I-R-A-C, but do not be misled or how would I say, don't oversimplify the IRAC method because it's not as simple as, you know, many people say, hey, all you gotta do is IRAC. Well, yeah, but there's more elements to that and today we're gonna go through that. And of course, for many of you, this is review. And so, okay, so the issue, rule, and the element, many, most people get that. Okay. Where they fall short is where they have the performance of the analysis. So again, many people use here, and here's where you have the counter argument. Now, I wrote here that after the counter argument, you insert a rebuttal or a supporting statement to the counter argument. Now, me personally, I like to write an argument, which is placed here, and then provide a counter argument to that argument, and then write a rebuttal. And I do that just to stay, keep it simple, and keep the same structure, it makes it easier for me. But if you also want to present your argument, that's fine, and then present a counter argument, maybe you find that counter argument more appealing, and then in that case, you do not write a rebuttal, you write a supporting statement to the counter argument. So think about this like the elements to a plot, right? You have the exposition, the rise in action, the climax, and the falling action, and the resolution. So it's a very standard. And that's what I want you to do too when you write these responses. I don't want you to be, to start off with, of course, when you're trying to write that 65 response consistently, you want to just stay basic, apply basic structures. And that's what I'm discussing here. And then of course you have the conclusion to the element and then the overall conclusion again, two conclusions there. Now let's look at a response that was given a score of 65. And I'm just going to focus here on call question one for the July 2018 California bar exam. So let's go to page three of five. 
And here the person who wrote this said, hey, look, I'm going to insert a counter argument and I'm going to use the issue of spousal immunity privilege. So today we're going to focus on this and see how they could have done better because the next response that we're going to view is going to be a 70. So let's look at the elements here, the, the nomenclature. So we have the issue here and we have the rule, valid marriage, and then they give the argument. Let's look at this screen because in this version here, the components of the major issue analysis are emphasized. So it's the same content, it's just broken down. So again, the initial argument here, and then they give the counter argument, however, right? And then after that, they are missing the rebuttal or the statement in support of that counter argument. Look at that, none. Conclusion to the element, none. And in conclusion to the issue, that one is present. Now that is a 65, that is minimum competence. This writer here could have definitely make this a little bit stronger. And we're gonna look at the 70 response now and see what they did different. Okay, here we go. Let's grab that 70 response. And they also focused on spousal testimony. Let's go there. So then we have issue, then we have the rules there, the elements, and it says here. Okay, great. Again, let's switch to this format. And let me continue. It says here, the may claim the spousal testimony privilege applies, and Vic may claim this privilege as well. And then they insert the counter argument. Now, notice how here is just in the same sentence. However, this privilege does not apply to Vic and Deb and because they are not actually married. Although they live together, that is not enough to meet the marriage requirement. Okay, great. So, of course, my criticism there is that that's a run-on sentence, but still, the components of a great analysis are there. And then here, versus the 60 response, they do have a rebuttal or a statement in support of that counter argument. It says further, California does not. So I hope you enjoyed this video. There is an affiliate code for barss.com. And remember, I will get a small percentage of that. So just to let you guys know. And also remember, get that book, 1440, Advanced Direct Techniques. All the best to you. Until soon.